everybody. Welcome to the AA Red Emerson Advanced Wood Products Lab. I'll be your uh, tour docent here. My name is Evan Schmidt. I'm the Outreach Coordinator at Tallwood Design Institute. And uh, we're gonna be sticking mostly inside here because rainy Oregon. So masks on and follow me. This is our seminar space within the building. I'll give you a little bit of a background about uh, who we are and why the building is here. So Tallwood Design Institute is a collaboration between two different universities in Oregon. That's University of Oregon and more specifically the College of Design, so architecture. Uh, and here at Oregon State University, we've got the College of Engineering and the College of Forestry. So TDI is a research collaborative that's uniting the disciplines of forestry, wood science, architecture, and civil engineering to advance the state of the art of timber construction. We are currently at the College of Forestry at Oregon State University. So the AA Red Emerson Advanced Wood Products Lab is part of a new forestry campus called the Oregon Forest Science Complex. Um, the building is kind of meta in the sense that what we do here, because this is sort of our headquarters, is research on advanced wood products and applications of advanced wood products. Uh, but the building itself is also a showcase structure for uh, locally made wood products. So if we kind of walk in here a little bit to our seminar space, which is really primarily intended to be a workshop space, an educational space, uh, you'll notice that the whole room has a lot of exposed wood products. So we've got uh, locally sourced glue lamb and pear lamb up here. Uh, and then we have um, some research posters and so on and so forth, demonstrating some of the projects that we are involved on. If we kind of walk through this way, we just continue through the front of house. So this is where all of our offices are. Um, but really the kind of primary showcase area is the lab itself. So the building is roughly 12,500 square feet, but the majority of that is in the lab space, right? Um, so the lab I think makes up something like 10,000 square feet of that space. And uh, as we can see here, the space is much more grandiose and uh, loud than the, uh, the front of house. So this is really where all the action is. Um, TDI has a, a number of affiliated faculty that we work with, and thus we have a number of labs that we work with. So this is just one space amongst the sort of myriad of spaces that we use. Uh, but this space is really unique. Uh, we have really uh, two primary functions that we'll learn about. Uh, the first is advanced manufacturing, which everyone watching this video is probably familiar, is a big part about the discussion of mass timber. So uh, CNC, uh, uh, numeric control processing. And then the other side of the lab is a very large scale structural testing bay that's dedicated specifically to large scale timber construction. So we'll learn about that in a second. I just wanted to touch on a few things of interest in the building. Uh, you'll notice that the space is virtually unfinished in terms of the interior, but of course that's something that we're interested in showcasing. Um, you will notice that the building looks like it's sheathed in plywood, uh, but this is actually mass plywood. So this represents one of the first applications, structural applications of mass plywood panels in a building. Uh, so the walls, the sheathing are actually 40 foot long walls uh, that are about 12 foot wide that were craned into position while the glue lamp structure itself was erected. So the building went up really quickly. Basically two glue lamp bays were built at a time. Each bay is 20 foot wide and they would just crane the mass plywood in, screw it in place, add some shear connectors and move on. So with that, I'm gonna take us to talk to Jorn and then Byron and, and learn a little bit about some of the research we're doing here. Yeah, welcome. Uh, so yeah, my name is Jörn Detman, technical manager for the Tallwood Design Institute. So we're just entering the, the manufacturing facilities here. And um, when, when you get in, first thing you will see is on the left side here, the, our BSC Mass Timber CNC Processing Center. Um, it gives you a pretty good idea. So this is for sure the, the machine with the biggest footprint. Um, that side there, that's the, actually the outfeed side. We, um, if you look up, you can see we're actually, we don't have much clearance on the outfeed side. 
lots of clearance here on the on the infeed side which is obviously obviously important we have the two overhead cranes then we can drop our panels or beams directly onto the machine here you can see um, the the carriage is in place ready to receive a, a beam or um, one with with the, these certain add-ons that you can see a little bit there on the floor with these add-ons we can convert the machine into a um, into a vacuum table for panels um, maximum panel size for this machine is uh, roughly 10 by 30 feet um, for beams it's uh, also 30 feet long but depth wise we're maxing out at about three feet um, then here on the left is the, our our uh, Minda CLT press um, we can go around a bit it's a bit of a mess here we can look into it so this is kind of like custom made for us it's it's kind of like a lab for a lab setup so this tray comes out we can just pull it out manually we can do our layup and then press and now we're kind of going reverse here this uh, on the left here is the resin applicator um, also you know custom designed for us where um, we can we can run uh, polyurethane that's actually what it's set up for right now but we can also run two component uh, melamine uriform aldehyde uh, systems and those are the two main systems for CLT right uh, polyurethane and MUF melamine urea formaldehyde and um, if we squeeze through here again now we're really in the in the reverse order um, we can see our molder here I can turn on the lights um, the, the molder so this is it, making CLT this is what you would start with right we have our rough material two by sixes um, first thing is you send them through the molder um, if they're not cut to length then even before that you would cut them to the length that you want our press we can press eight by ten feet panels so let's say your outer layers are ten feet long so you want to make sure that they're ten feet the middle layer is eight feet we can cut those uh, to rough length on the on the the chop saw here with the positioner send them through the planer and then go to the resin applicator into the press once it's pressed we would then put it onto our CNC uh, here on the manufacturing side is the the KUKA robot so this is an industrial robot that you would also see in the in the auto industry um, any any pick and place or assembly line um, uh, our model is a uh, is, uh, KR120 uh, 2.7, so it's 120 kilograms payload and has a, a reach of 2.7 meters. Um, and right now is actually a good timing. What you can see there, we're, we're machining a piece right now. Um, and to compare the two, we just talked about the BSC Mass Timber Processing Center. These two do very similar things. They're both doing milling, right? And in, in our case, mostly mass timber milling. One of the big differences is this machine is, is, is very flexible in the, in the setup. It's very flexible in what you can machine. And um, we use it for like very complicated projects. Um, again, one of the biggest things is the, the, the height, the machining height. In, uh, in this case is pretty much with with this machine we can reach any point in this envelope so the the, the work envelope is is very big and just to put that into comparison this the the BSC CNC for panel processing maxes out at about a foot in thickness and that's um that that's no problem for this machine um tooling wise similar i would say in general a, a little smaller but that's also more the limitation of the spindle that we have on there right now um, in the future i could definitely see us also um, using different end effectors the end effector is basically what's sitting at the end of the arm so which again right now is a spindle but with the same robot we could also put on an, an a large scale 3d extruder we can uh, put on a gripper and that kind of stuff so very, very flexible setup I'm Byron Miyamoto. I'm the structural testing coordinator here at the Tallwood Design Institute. Um, so this is the second half of the lab. 
Uh, Jorn showed you the manufacturing. This is the structural testing. Here we do large scale to full scale tests. Uh, to our left here, or to your right, uh, is the H-frame. We have a steel H-frame. Um, what we do here is this allows us to support our specimens, testing specimens, as well as we can push slash pull using our hydraulic actuators and test our specimens in bending, compression, or tension. Um, so what we have here is our reaction wall. Uh, in the reaction wall, we have several or multiple different anchor points. Each anchor point can hold up to 260,000 pounds. Uh, what we use these anchor points for is to hold up structural steel as well as mounting our hydraulic actuators on so we can actually um, test against this wall using it to do the large scale testing. Uh, this is a great example of how we can use the wall. We uh, mount our structural steel to it and then we can mount other pieces kind of like a giant uh, Lego set. Um, this is a great example of what we're going to be doing for um, a project that we're going to be constructing a three-story mass timber structure. Um, it will be constructed pretty much using the whole wall and then with the steel here we'll attach different hydraulic actuators and then we can push and pull on these hydro on the structure using these actuators. Hi, I'm Ari Sinha, Associate Professor in Wood Science and Engineering, College of Forestry, Oregon State University. So this project, um, in this project we'll test a three-story full-scale building inside this lab here just to characterize the performance of different lateral force resistance systems and these are all innovative systems that are up and coming in the industry in the engineering world uh, that we will test out here uh, on a full-scale three-story building uh, using a variety of different uh, fastener solutions and essentially our goal is to characterize the performance of these different lateral force resistance system for uh, so that the engineers and architects have a better uh, understanding of essentially time to functionality of the building. So what people are looking for these days is not only whether there's life safety um, objectives in place in their design, but also whether the building is occupiable or functional after the earthquake. So we are trying to see how we can make good lateral forces in systems and characterize them so that engineers can design for those solutions. We need some baseline characteristic or baseline data on regular shear walls and then all the other solutions, one of them would be post tensions, then we are also having a BRBs, uh, buckling restraint brace frames in there. Um, there are two other solutions where we have interpanel shear connectors and also a uh, a hybrid between mass timber and light frame shear walls that we are using to um, incorporate within the within our design so that we can test those. We are characterizing both at characterizing the system predominantly but with this test we are also for the first time uh, using laminated veneer lumber for our framing so our beams and columns are all laminated veneer lumber um, and also the panels are all veneer based, so e either MPP or a veneer based uh, panel product for your floors and your walls. So these are the materials that has not been tested before in a, in a shake table or in a large scale testing facility. So this is the first time we are going to test them. So we are also going to know the performance characteristics of a laminated beam uh, or LVL beam to column. Uh, connections, LVL uh, or laminated uh, veneer or veneer based panels uh, performance as a diaphragm and wall system. Things are different when you're testing a component versus when you're testing a full scale structure because there's a systems effect in place. So once uh, to incorporate or to get an understanding of the systems effect you need to test a full scale structure. Now why three stories? It's because uh, that's one of the one of the spots that has not been tested that much. So we have tested a two-story building in San Diego previously, and that was all CLT. Then we are also testing a 10-story building. We means a group of us, a group of uh, researchers are testing that, and we are collaborating with that. We are not looking at high rises, but to mid-rise structures, and three-story gives us the, the um, 
mimics the boundary conditions in a way that we can characterize the performance that we can extrapolate to a mid-rise sector. So we are awaiting material delivery. The material would be delivered within three, four weeks, so probably end of March. Uh, then by May we'll start erection or construction and by late May, early June we'll start testing. The testing is in five different phases, so by the time we end the fifth phase it would probably be September, October. But the data from the first phase would be available prior to that, probably middle of July. Um, so it's a three or four month long project testing phase would be and, uh, and one unique thing I forgot to mention is the, all the products going in there, except for the steel for the fasteners, all the products going in there are made from Oregon fiber. So it's all Douglas fir manufactured in Oregon, processed and manufactured in Oregon, and an Oregon facility that we are gonna be using here. So within the university, we have uh, two collaborators from the College of Engineering, uh, Andre Barbosa and Barbara Simpson. And then we are also collaborating with some industrial partners, KPFF, Homes, uh, Structure of Woodworks, for example. And then also uh, we have manufacturing partners in Ferris Lumber Company and Boise Cascades. So these are our uh, main collaborators. We're gonna have some data that would be used by uh, the 10-story design team to come up with, because the 10-story uh, structure will have two different wall systems. One would be CLT and one would be MP MPP, or mass plywood panels. And the mass plywood panels, nothing to that this scale has been tested before. So this data would be useful as a plug-in to that, to the design over there, would be useful for that. On behalf of Bucky, the TDI Platypus, and I, would like to thank you for joining our tour of the AA Red Emerson Advanced Wood Products Lab. We also would particularly like to thank all of the companies that have donated materials to the lab uh, and all of the companies that helped make the lab a reality, including uh, our major donor, A.A. Red Emerson and his family. Uh, that Sierra Pacific Industries made a major contribution to make this lab possible. Uh, and we'd also like to thank the College of Forestry for um, allowing us to occupy the space and do the work we do. So with that, we hope you enjoy the rest of the conference and looking forward to seeing you at some point in the future in person.